What does wisdom look like? Maybe this is the picture that pops into your head. Gray hair, long beard, thick spectacles, all the knowledge. And how about an owl for good measure? Many older people do have wise things to say, but if you wanna be wise, you don't have to wait till your hair turns gray because wisdom can look like you. It's all about finding out what to do and then, of course, doing it. See, wise people are curious and willing to learn, especially the truth about themselves. Wise people are willing to ask for help. Hey, Aunt Jen, this kid said something mean to me. What should I do? Wise people choose to fill their minds with things that are good and true, so they can choose to speak words that are loving and true. Whether you're five or 75, you can say, God, your wisdom is all that I'm after. I wanna grow stronger, I wanna dig deeper. And when you find out what you should do and do it, others can see God at work in you. That's why wisdom is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. I've got so many questions. There's so much to learn that I don't know. I don't have a direction. But God, I know you show me where to go. Where's the food color? Oh, hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're taking a look at the story of someone who wanted to dig a little deeper. Aha! Food coloring. Whew. Food color in the Story Lab were like PB and J. Hey, I'm Carter, and that's it. 
Okay, then I guess it's my job to let you know that all this month we're talking about ways that we can grow in wisdom, just like Jesus did. <laughs> And I'm Zeke. <laughs> and I'm Zeke. Little late, superhero. What? what? You, you said we're taking a deep dive to the ocean today, so I'm ready. I meant deep dive into knowledge about the ocean, not actual water. Oh, so I don't need a snorkel? We're only using this much water. Ah. Uh, well, let's make it. Today, we're exploring the ocean layers on land. We'll use our imagination and some of these supplies. For this activity, we will need five jars of water, sea salt, food coloring, scrap construction paper, and a syringe with a tube or a funnel in a large straw will do. Is this for breathing underwater? First things first. Step one, add salt. This first jar will get no salt. The next will get two spoonfuls, then four, then seven, then nine. And four. Now we move on to the next. And seven. All right, and the last one. And nine. All right, excuse me, Zeke. Hey, the ocean is salt water, right? Yep, but we're also adding salt to increase the density of the water. Density just means how tightly the molecules are packed together. Since the different layers have different densities, they'll stay separate. Which brings us to step two, coloring our layers. We'll put the tiniest bit of sky blue in the first jar, then blue-green one drop, then navy blue one drop, then purple two drops, then black four drops. So I'm thinking the ocean layers go this way instead of that way. Step three, the layers all go in here carefully. Now, each colored salt solution represents one layer of the ocean. We'll start at the bottom with the darkest water, the trenches. Ah, Carter, I'm always willing to be in the trenches with you. Thanks, Z. Ooh, it's so dark down in the trenches. Yep. Zero sunlight reaches the trenches. And the deeper that you go in the ocean, the higher the density of the water. There's so much we don't know about the deepest parts of the ocean, but we do know that sea cucumbers and starfish live there. Hmm. All right. Now we're going to pour in the rest of the layers. Because each color is a different density, they should layer rather than mix it. But it's a little tricky, so we're using this tube and some paper to help. There. All right, next layer, the abyss. Ooh, I feel like we're doing very delicate sea surgery. Peering into the depths of the abyss. This zone is where many types of squid and shrimp live. It all kind of looks the same. You know what we're missing? Light. Ah. Here it is. <laughs> you see? Yeah. All right. Okay. Now for the next layer, the midnight zone. In the midnight zone, we find anglerfish and the ever popular blobfish. That looks that's, so cool. That's great. Okay, next. The twilight zone. Ah. We get a little more light reaching down here. Mm. Here you go. The twilight zone, home of jellyfish and octopuses. Octopi? Octopodes? 
All right. And finally, the sunlight zone, our lightest solution, both in color and density. You ready? Yep. Sunlight. Almost done. Yep. In the sunlight zone, we find sea turtles, clownfish, flying fish, manatees, dolphins, tuna fish, blue whales, and so much more. <laughs> oh, dude, this is awesome sauce. It's so cool how the layers stay separate. Yeah, the ocean covers almost three quarters of the Earth's surface, and we only know details of about one third of the ocean's animals. And every year, almost 2,000 ocean animals are discovered. The deeper we go, the more there is to learn. Speaking of, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. God made a perfect world, but people turned away from God. From the very beginning, God had a plan to restore us to relationship. Even when the people turned away, over and over again, God remained faithful. At the perfect time, God sent a rescuer in the form of a baby, God's very own son, Jesus. Even though he was God's son, Jesus was born to an ordinary family in an ordinary town. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Jesus grew up in an everyday family in a small town. His family had traditions just like families today do special things each year to celebrate holidays. Every year, Jesus and his family would travel to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. During Passover, the Jewish people remembered how God delivered them from enslavement in Egypt. When Jesus was 12 years old, he journeyed to Jerusalem with his family as usual they probably spent the week with family and friends and very likely shared a special Passover meal together. At the end of the week, Jesus' family started the long trip home. But after the first day of travel, they discovered something. Jesus was nowhere to be found. You told him when we were leaving, right? Of course I did. Everybody knew. Mary and Joseph had probably assumed Jesus was with cousins or friends somewhere in the group of travelers has seen him all day. Did we really leave him behind in Jerusalem? We have to go back, right now. Mary and Joseph raced the whole way back to Jerusalem. By this time, 12-year-old Jesus had been without his parents for several days. Any news? Nothing. None of our family or friends have seen him anywhere. He's got to be somewhere. We haven't looked there. The temple? At last, Mary and Joseph climbed up to the temple and... Sure enough. Jesus, my son. Jesus, have you been here all this time? This young man has been asking us questions. Pretty impressive ideas, too. We're frankly amazed by what he understands. Jesus, we've been looking everywhere. Why didn't you tell us where you were going? Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? It's time to go home now. Come back anytime. Jesus returned home to Nazareth with his parents and continued to obey them. As he grew up, he became wiser and stronger and more and more pleasing to God and to people. The end. That's crazy. Jesus was without his parents for days in a big city. What did he eat? Where did he sleep? Uh, well, Luke does not record that part of the story. So what's, what's our part in the story? Jesus is God's own son, and he looked for and grew in wisdom. Now, if Jesus did that, then it's definitely important for us to look for wisdom too. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. Okay, I know how to look for stuff like my shoes, but how do we look for wisdom? Oh, well, you can think of wisdom like, uh, like a buried treasure that you really have to dig for. Wisdom isn't just being smart or knowing things. Wisdom is knowing what to do with what you learn. Yeah, like I can know that eating veggies will help me stay healthy, but that doesn't matter if I keep scarfing down junk food. You gotta actually eat those carrots and hummus. Mm-hmm, great example. You can also gain wisdom from your mistakes. I put off studying for a test last week. 
Then I had to stay up super late to study, and I was so tired, I didn't do great on the test anyway. Uh-huh, so wisdom for you will be starting to study ahead of time for the next test. For reals. You can learn wisdom from other people, too, both from wise choices that they've made and also from the times that they've failed. It could be your parents, uh, a favorite aunt or uncle or, or a small group leader. I like hanging out with my grandpa. He's also got amazing stuff to say. Back in my day. <laughs> well, most importantly, we can ask God for wisdom. In the book of James, we read, if any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. So we gain wisdom by asking first. So we can know what to do. And then do it. Yeah, I think you got it, wise guys. See you next time. So here's the thing. Wisdom is worth searching for. Speaking of searches, you think there might be any treasure buried at the bottom of this ocean? As a matter of fact, there is. Are you joking? For reals? Yeah, I buried our lunch money in quarters. Oh, we get to dig for buried treasure. Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See you next time. Okay, should we use the syringe? Or, or maybe the tiniest shovel? Why not both? Oh, let's do it. <laughs>